Now this week, it's all about spring flowers, materials that you can get in your local supermarket or even pick from the garden. Hello everybody and welcome back. It's lovely to see you all once again. Now today's tutorial is using spring flowers. I'm really keen to use some spring flowers when they're available to us in the supermarkets and the florist shop because the spring flowers are still fairly seasonal even though we can get certain varieties throughout the whole year. It's really nice to be able to arrange with flowers that may be coming up in your garden or are easily available in the supermarkets. And rather than using floral foam, I'm going to go back and use some of the wire netting. Now we've looked at this once before and I'll link it here in the cards so you can go back and revisit that video. This wire netting, um, sometimes referred to as chicken wire, but it has an approximate inch gap here in between the wire structure. And that's ideal for inserting the spring flowers. Spring flowers are naturally very soft stemmed they're not great levels of floral foam. They break easily. Um, as it implies, the stem is very soft. So using wire of this sort of construction is really good. It's far more environmentally friendly. You can reuse it time and time again. The basket is oval shaped and normally there would be water in it, but again, it's not much good for me every time I tip it forward. And I've made sure that the chicken wire is filling my container so I can use all areas of that small basket. I checked beforehand that the basket was waterproof. It is lined with plastic, so I know when I fill that with water, it isn't going to leak out all over my table. If you haven't got a basket, just use any vessel receptacle that you might have in the house. Could be a bowl, could be a vase, could be a fruit bowl or a salad bowl or even a punch bowl whatever you've got is ideal for this type of arranging. It needs to be deep enough so that it will hold your water and what is important with this type of design is that when you insert the stems in you're putting them right to the bottom of your container so that they have full access to the water within your design and remember to keep topping it up. Spring flowers are quite thirsty and they will drink the water very rapidly. Today I'm a little bit inspired by Constance Spry and if you don't know anything about historical design then research Constance Spry. She was a lovely lady that brought flower arranging to the masses. She encouraged us to enjoy the simple beauty and the natural charm of the flowers, foliages and anything really that you maybe could get in the hedgerows. She encouraged us to really love it and embrace anything that we could get hold of, bring it inside and arrange it beautifully inside the home. And if you're interested in floral design, I'm going to link it in the box below because we've had lots of questions about it. There's some fantastic books by NAFAS and NAFAS is the National Association of Flower Arranging Societies. They're based in London. We have 21 areas throughout the UK. You'll find flower clubs, demonstrations, some lessons and classes and you'll also find on their website so if you google for NAFAS, N-A-F-A-S, you'll find publications and they have several books that are aimed at historical floral design so a really good resource if you're learning floristry or maybe you're just starting off on your floral journey. So enough talking, let's get creative with today's design. So imagine I've got water here in the base I've got a nice sharp scissors and other than the hellebores which I've picked for my own garden and they were windswept with all this poor weather we've had over the last couple of days so I decided to pick them and use them in an arrangement other than these everything has come from a local supermarket so it's something that you will be able to recreate at home it's going to be a front facing design but one thing I have to be really mindful of when I'm making the arrangement is my basket is quite lightweight so I really need to work on the actual balance of the arrangement. If I add too many materials to the front the basket is going to tip over so I really need to consider equally dispersing the weight of my flowers so that's the actual weight to make sure my arrangement isn't going to tip over, which will make me look a little bit stupid on camera. 
Right, now I'm going to start with daffodils. It is St David's Day for us here in Wales on March the 1st. So I'm going to embrace my national flower and I'm going to start by placing these quite low down towards the front. Now, I find this is the easier way to arrange flowers when they're in the chicken wire. I find it easier to work from the centre and work my way out. No right or wrong way, you do whatever feels natural to you. But what you do need to look at is the shape that the flowers are naturally facing. So you'll see here with this hellebore, if I want something to drape over the front of my container, this front section here is going to work really well. So I'm going to remove that side shoot and bring this in from the side so that I have some draping movement there over the front of my container. So this time I'm not too concerned about creating an overall shape. I'm just placing the flowers in so that we can really appreciate the individual flower types and the flower heads and all the characteristics and the individual personality with those flowers. Now if we look at this hellebore, we could either use it sideways, remembering that it's not like floral foam where I can come in in a horizontal position. It has to be angled downwards so it gets a good supply of water. So if I'm going to use this one, it needs to be arranged in that sort of position there. The, clear, the flower head is nice and clear and my stem is inserted into the, into the chicken wire. So, for example, if I bring it across this way, there is no water source getting to that stem. If we think about it, the individual shape of the stems is almost predicting the overall size of your arrangement. And I've got some catkins. Um, I'm going to use those towards the end to really extend the design outwards. But initially, I'm going to start down quite low. I've got a couple of different varieties of the daffodil, so we'll bring the colour of that towards the outside as well. But for the moment, I'm going to stick here at the front. Wonderful irises, which are gorgeous against the yellow of my daffodils. Bigger head, so that one for a moment is going to come towards the front. Now what you might notice is there's very little foliage in this arrangement. And that's mainly because Constant Spry would have encouraged you to arrange flowers seasonally. So I'm, I'm avoiding any materials that wouldn't be available to me naturally in the spring. If you've got a garden full of maybe heathers or the foliage of the hellebore, then you can use it in the design. But I'm a little bit limited and today I'm focusing on these beautiful seasonal spring flower types. Right, so lovely blue iris there in the front. Now another material that's from the garden, I haven't used this before in any floral designs. This is one of the Euphorbia family, so it's related to the Ponsettia. This is the common spurge, and um, there's lots and lots of different varieties of Euphorbia. And this is a material that is classed as um, an irritant. If you've got a sensitivity to flowers, then be very careful using any types of the euphorbia. They exude that sticky white sap, um, which can cause a lot of itching and a lot of irritation. So be very careful. Don't get it near your eyes. And if you're sensitive or have any allergies, then I would consider wearing gloves. But it's a wonderful lime green color. And I'm going to use it. I'm going to get it into the design in this sort of position here. So I'm making use of that twisted stem on the top. I don't want to squash it down low where you lose all that personality and the characteristic of that lovely flower. Now remember that I've got to start bringing some weight towards the back and I have a few of these spurge and for me I like them used in this shape rather than angled down for a moment anyway. That might change as we work our way through but I'm going to encourage this side of the design to go a little upwards and it's going to naturally 
lend itself really well to the shape of the flowers that I've got. I'm going to bring the green colour in onto the opposite side and I'm going to work my way under the handle of the basket. I'm hoping that the basket handles will be almost covered when I finish the design. But what I'm aiming to do is to be able to see all the individual flower heads. I don't want to squash them in and create a design um, with an outline shape. You know, those very geometric shapes that we've looked at before. Right, let's start building up from the centre. Now, I also have some tulips, which we'll look at in just a second. But I'm going to bring some of the yellow daffodil up towards the top. A couple of beds here as well. And what I'm trying to do is to create depth. So that 3D effect that I talk about all the time. I want to have a front and a back to my arrangement as well as the sides. And that is, is created by moving your flowers all throughout the wire netting. So I'm placing the flowers in at the back. I'm not angling everything forward to you because that will create a really artificial look. Now then, few of the daffodils down lower at the back. That's going to help me create that weight that I need. And we'll keep a few down shorter for the moment. And what you'll find with the wire netting is that you'll get to a stage where you can't add any more, in, any more flowers into the design because the wire netting will be full. And then you know that's the time to stop. So you can see now I have a front and a back and I've created that depth that I repeatedly tell you about in each video. Now then, where are we going to go from here? I think at this stage we'll add some more of the white. Um, this is a really interesting shape. I think I'm going to add this towards the middle. Now you will see that the flowers will spin and rotate slightly as we're putting them in. Don't worry too much about it. The beauty of the wire netting is that you can move things about. You can take them out and you can push them back in again. And in traditional floral design, we have the larger flowers to the center, which creates the focal point. But lots of these designs were inspired by paintings created in the Dutch Flemish era. And in the Dutch Flemish era, the big, more important flowers were often on the outside of the designs. So you'll see that this very uh, popular fashion at the moment for wedding bouquets or um, large designs that, are, that we're referring to as boho is actually coming from Dutch Flemish designs from many, many years ago. And rather than those t traditional British rules of flower arranging where we have the larger flowers to the center, we quite often have the bigger blooms towards the outside. And if you've learned traditional flower arranging, sometimes it can be a bit difficult for you to understand and for you to appreciate, I suppose, what's going on. Now I have a little tulip here, it's an orangey red shade. And what I've done with this one is I've opened up the head. So it's a more mature tulip. When they're fresh and the heads are smaller, it's difficult to do it. But that is naturally bending beautiful to one side. So now I'm going to use it, showing off that curved stem. So don't worry at this stage about that big head being on the outside. I'm going to do another one, I think, another tulip that's slightly more open. And this is going to change the shape of the tulip head. It's going to give me a, a contrast in shape and texture. And who would have guessed that was a little tulip? Now, I'm not going to put it on the opposite side. I'm just going to place this in so you can see. Because by placing it in on the opposite side, we get these two very dominant sections and your eye tends to miss what's going on in the centre. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring them over so they're both on the same sort of side as the arrangement. But I'm going to angle them back slightly so the, the visual weight isn't focused all in the same position. So how's that? What do we think of that so far? Very natural, very organic. 
Um, now my other tulips aren't quite as open so these can drape nicely over the front and don't forget I mentioned in one of the previous videos that tulips continue to grow after they've been cut from the plant and they will move around but you've got to enjoy them enjoy them and appreciate the way that they're twisting and turning in the floral design now I had a comment made on one of my previous videos a week or so ago and it was commented on that I hadn't cut the bottoms of my stems. It might not be shown on camera because we edit the videos after each filming session. But just to highlight and remind you all, you have to recut the stems of your flowers before you're putting them in the floral design. You might not always see me do it on camera because we condense the videos and make them shorter. But a clean, fresh cut is really very important. So quite natural and organic I should say. Now stand back, take a little look at what we're doing. Now the blue colour is quite dominant and it's quite a recessive colour so blue draws your eye into the middle and this sort of section here might be almost lost on the camera because the dark colours recess away from the light um, and the white is probably popping and more dominant in the video itself. Um, so I'm not going to put a great deal of blue in. What I'm now going to do is add some more of the lime green of the spurge. And I love the shape on that. Traditionally, that will be hard to get into an arrangement like a triangle or an L shape because it has so many twists and turns. But for this style of arranging, it's going to work really well. Now I've still got catkins which are going to drape lovely over the side. But for the moment, just find a suitable spot for that one. Okay, I've moved it slightly towards the outside because it was hiding the hellebore there at the back. So what do we think? Is this the type of arrangement you can do at home? Do you now understand a little bit more about why the flowers in this type of arrangement are arranged the way they are? Right, let's get some more of these yellow daffodils in. Oh, I'm just working my way, creating lots of colour splashes. With the daffodils, because they are quite soft stemmed, you need to take your time inserting them into the wire mesh because we don't want to damage them as we're inserting them into the foam, into the mesh. And what you need also to be careful of when you're preparing that mesh is that any of the sharp edges are tucked under out of the way so that you don't damage your stems as you're placing them in. Now I've got two slightly different varieties of the daffodil. One is a bit shorter than the other. The head size is a bit bigger on one of the flowers. And we can see there's a, almost a crescent shape starting to form so you can see a sweeping design coming through the middle. Lots of chicken wire showing at the back. So I'm going to use the larger blue irises there towards the back. Um, that will do two things. It's going to give me weight. So it's going to stop my design tipping forward. And it also helps to cover that mesh at the back. I'm also going to use these little windswept hellebores that have come out of my garden and there's not a great deal of room here now at the back just a few more of the little daffodils there and a couple or maybe just one single tulip there so the colour is all the way through to the back most of my chicken wire frame is covered. I've just got a few placements that we'll cover in just a second. But what I'm going to do now is to bring in the pussy willow. I'm going to extend that out to make the design longer and wider on the edges. And what I'll do with this is we'll look at it, see what way it's going. I need to place it in the arrangement so that the little catkins are draping down and for me I think it suits that sort of shape there. I'm also quite concerned that I have 
quite a large piece of the green tulip leaf showing there. I might remove it later. But there we are, I've extended the design out. Give me a much bigger design for the flower choice that I've got. Um, quite unfortunately, they're all quite straight. They don't have a great deal of movement in them. But I'm going to use that on the, this side as well. It's going to exaggerate that sort of crescent shape that I've almost created. I have a small bit of willow. So again, a bit of windfall, nothing too exciting. But it, we've had these tremendous winds over the last couple of weeks. So this is a great opportunity for you to use any windfall branches or damaged flowers from your garden. You don't have to think about the overall shape of the arrangement, just making something really pretty with the flowers that you've got. Got another little bit of the catkin and that's going to drape nicely here and keep company with that longer tulip. Got to be careful at this stage because I don't want to damage anything that I've already got in. Just tweak a few pieces if they've moved around in the design. Now for me, this area here needs colour of some description. So we'll look at working on that area next. But I think that's lovely. This area here that I felt needed another flower, I've decided to use the iris. Now I think the iris is going to work quite well in that position there. I don't need to have a great deal of flowers. Ah, oh, there we are, that's sitting in quite nicely there. That's how it's coming together so far. Again, a little bit of gap through the centre here where I can see the chicken wire. But um, for me, I'm almost complete. Now I do have some lovely shop bought um, pussy willow. So this is a supermarket pussy willow. And these are often available in all the large supermarkets. And you can quite often get these in a variety of colors. You can get them dyed. Uh, I'm not a great lover of dyed flowers, but they do look quite spectacular in some floral designs. These are a more natural shade and it will help pick up on the white color of those halibores as well. Don't think we need a great deal more flower content in there, apart from something in the center. I'm just going to use some more of these wonderfully shaped pussy willows to bring the texture and the color there through to the back. So this style of arranging is more about arranging things that you can get hold of in your local vicinity, if you're out for a walk, if you've got flowers in the garden, if you have to buy flowers from the supermarket because that's the only place you can get them from. This is about really enjoying the different textures and the colors and the perfumes that come from the individual flowers rather than creating those very geometric shapes that came about with the invention of floral foam. Right, so a couple of yellow daffodils just down towards the center. And I am cutting these short because I feel that we need some extra color here at the base. And if you wanted to put them in longer, that's perfectly acceptable. And I think I'm pretty much done. So what do we think of this one? Hope that gives you a bit more of an explanation into this very natural style of arranging that's very popular at the moment. If you follow any types of arranging on social media, this is really very much on trend at the moment. And really, if you look back at historical floral designs, you'll see that there are bits of arranging taken from different eras within floral design. So go and have a little play, see what you can come up with and create a very organic design just like this. So thank you all very much for watching. Comment in the box below. Let me know what you think of this style. And of course, if you've got any questions, let me know. But thanks for watching and we'll see you very soon. Bye for now.